Well, hello, and welcome back to the Dark Mods New Mapper Workshop. This is Spring Heel, and we're on to Lesson 10. Today's lesson is going to be a little bit different in that these are not entirely beginner techniques, but they are things that I think will give you a little bit more freedom in your missions to perhaps create the kind of map that you want. We're going to start first with something called Vert Mode. Now, this is something that I actually didn't realize existed until after I'd completed my first mission but it can be a really useful way to create diagonals. Uh, in particular, it's especially useful for rubes. Basically, it is a mode that allows you to move individual corners. So here's how it works. You can select any brush and then hit V to go into vert mode, and you'll see little boxes on the corners of the brush. If you select those corners, you can then move them independently of the other corners. So it's an easy way to create diagonals. Now there are some limits. Uh, I don't believe you can overlap the verts. Uh, the brush uh, tends to disappear if you do that. But you can quickly make um, triangular or diagonal surfaces in this way. I think one of the most useful ways to use this technique is making a peaked roof. Um, it's pretty easy to do. You draw out a brush that is the width of the room that you want the roof on. You cut it using the clipper tool in the center and then grab the center verts and just drag them up and it creates a nice peak and everything is perfectly aligned for you. The next thing we're going to look at is how to give the player alternate ways to get around the map, specifically climbing. Creating climbable surfaces is actually uh, pretty simple. It just involves using a special kind of brush. So I'll show you how that's done. I'm going to start by going to the architecture and ladder folder just to pick a ladder model. And I'm just going to stick a few examples here into my courtyard. So we'll pick a ladder that fits, although it's, it's worth noting that this model is completely irrelevant. Uh, it's only there to give a visual indicator to the player that, that this is somewhere they can climb. If I only put the model in the map and nothing else, it wouldn't be climbable. What really determines whether something is climbable or not is the texture that you put on the brush surrounding it. So I'm going to draw a brush that surrounds the ladder and then we're going to go to uh, textures, common, and scroll down till we see a few that are called ladder. So we've got ladder chain and foliage and metal, um, even a ladder no sound if you want to make no sound at all. Uh, this texture isn't visible, but it determines what sound is made when the player climbs. So since this is a metal ladder, I'm going to choose ladder metal here. The only thing you need to be careful of here is that your brush sticks out far enough that the player can touch it before they hit the model. If the model gets in the way, the player can't attach to the ladder brush and they won't be able to climb. There's lots of things the player could climb, but one thing that you should be uh, sure of is that there's some visual clue for the player. If it's something that isn't usually climbable, like pipes, uh, it can be hard for the player to know whether they should try it or not. Some common climbables are obviously ropes and chains, which we'll look at, uh, and also really thick ivy. So if you wanted to do something like that, uh, you would just find some ivy models. I'm not going to make this look pretty, but uh, just to throw a few models down as an example. Then you would pick a brush that will give you the right sound. You don't want a metal ladder sound here you want to use ladder foliage. Chain models can be found in the dungeon folder and you can put a nice long chain there and do the same thing. Wrap it with a brush and give it a ladder chain texture so the player can climb it. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, you can see that now the player can climb each of these surfaces and they make the sounds you'd expect them to make.
All right, let's move on to the last of the advanced brushes, and uh, that is going to be water. Uh, now, I have to be frank, I don't know a whole lot about water. In the four missions that I've made, I've only used it once, and uh, in that case, I mostly just copied what I saw in the training mission. So my goal here is to cover the basics, but if you want um, more advanced things like uh, reflections and things like that, uh, you may have to do a little bit of research or ask around uh, for mappers who have done this more often than I have. So I've made myself a little uh, swimming pool here at the corner of my mansion. Uh, the first thing to do is to draw out a brush that is the shape of the water that you want to create. It's important that the brush reaches the edges of the pool uh, on all sides, that there's no gap between the edge of the water and the edge of the pool. Once it's the size you want, you're going to texture it. If you go to the uh, texture folders and under common, there'll be a TDM no draw solid liquid and we're going to apply that to all sides. If you click on the top surface of the water brush while holding down control shift it'll select just the top face uh, now we're going to pick what you want the top of the water surface to look like and there are a lot of options go down to the water sources folder and uh, there you'll see a whole bunch of different types of water surfaces now you can rule out all the ones that end in murk. So uh, mid murk, thick murk, thin murk, don't use any of those for the surface of your water. Those are for something else. Uh, the rest of them, you really kind of have to experiment to see what you want. A good default choice is water color. Now that texture will make your brush look like water, but it won't behave like water yet. Then we're going to turn this into an entity. So if you, with the brush selected, right click, create entity, and then scroll down to liquids, you'll see two choices. Uh, the only difference between the two really is that the murky water, the second one, uh, reduces the player's light gem when they're underwater. So that might be appropriate for darker water, but otherwise they're the same. Now for simple water, that's really all that you have to do. If you pop in game, you can see that the water surface is now uh, showing ripples and looking like water. We can jump into it and we can swim around. Um, you, you don't even have to do anything else to it if you're happy with the way it looks. But you do have a few other options if you want to do some customizing. One easy thing that you can do is play with the uh, texture scale. If you go to the surface inspector and um, go to the default scale at the bottom, different values will change the size and uh, speed of the ripples. I'm going to pick a uh, darker surface texture here just to show you something else that you may want to customize. So you can see the surface of the water is much darker, but when you jump in, the water is not as dark under the surface as you might expect. To change that, you go to that underwater GUI uh, field that um, appears when you create the liquid entity, and you can add one of several pre-made uh, GUIs. Now, I don't know of any easy way to select them. The only way I know of is to go to the uh, wiki page on water and you scroll down to water murk and it lists them all there and you can just copy and paste them. Perhaps there's an easier way but I'm not aware of it. So I'm going to pick uh, just one of these as an example, a blue-gray murk, and we'll see what that looks like in game. So you can see that that murk has made quite a difference underwater. It now seems as dark under the surface as the surface itself does. Now one thing people usually want to know how to do with water is how to create reflections. And there's two ways that I know to do this. One fakes it 
the other one does it for real. First, control shift click the top face of the water brush again. And then we're going to go up to the button at the top called create decals and click that. And what that will do is make a flat plane uh, that's flush with the top of the water. We're then going to go into the, the water source folder and we're going to look for the texture called Water Fake Reflect and Reflect O2. Water Fake Reflect O2 gives you sort of a static night sky. So you apply that to the patch that we just made and then uh, take that patch and lower it just below the surface of the water. Now there may be better ways to do this. As I've said before, I'm not very experienced with water, but this is one way that I've found that works on some water surfaces, but not all. Uh, it works for water dark and it works for water colored, but there are some water textures that this doesn't work on. When it does work though, it's uh, pretty effective for outdoor areas, although if you look too closely, you'll notice that uh, my sky has a full moon and the reflection does not, but I don't think most players would notice. Genuine reflective water is done in the same way, except uh, the texture that you apply to the decal is called water reflective. Uh, I have no idea what the difference is between uh, the three of them. But you apply that to the patch, again have it just below the surface of the water, and it will actually reflect your real environment, which looks fantastic, but often has some graphical glitches that I don't fully understand. Uh, I don't know what causes them, uh, but you can see as I lean back and forth, there's weird blocks of dark color in some of the corners of the pool. Fully reflective water is also heavy on performance, so that can be something else to consider. So let's go back quickly to those uh, flat Merc textures that I told you not to use. They're for a very specific purpose. Um, they're meant to go on a flat plane that you create the same way we created the plane for reflections. And it's meant to sit flush with the top of the brush. And what it does is it blends uh, some murkiness into the top of the water. So I'll show you a quick example by using a thick green murk. Here in game you can see now that the surface of the water is quite a bit darker, uh, quite a bit less transparent, and another thing you might notice is that the reflection has gone. So the reflection does not work with these murk overlays uh, for some reason. But this can be uh, useful if you want to create maybe very dirty sewer water and also these flat Merc textures uh, correspond with the GUIs. So whatever texture you use, there is a GUI designed specifically for that texture. So let's see if we can put together what we already know to create something a little advanced. Let's make uh, some water coming out of a pipe that lands in the pool of water here. So we'll start with a simple brush, a thin brush that will be the water coming out. Um, probably a patch would be more accurate for this, but we'll stick with brushes since it's a bit easier. Then we're going to look for one of the textures that is moving water. I think water stream fast would be appropriate here. I'm going to use the clipper tool to cut this in two different spots and then go to vert mode with a, by hitting V to uh, rotate some of the verts uh, to create an angled uh, trajectory of the water here. It's a slow process, but eventually we get the shape that I want and then move the whole thing down so that it's touching the surface of the pool. The next step is to create a splash effect where the water hits the pool. So if you remember back to our previous lesson, you do that by creating a funk emitter. 
uh, positioning it where you want the particle to play. Uh, select particle from the entity window and then scroll around to find the particle you want. Now the particle viewer makes it really difficult to tell what size particles are. So this step actually took quite a lot of trial and error to figure out which one would work. I'd recommend just making like a dozen different particle emitters, pick all the ones you think might work, uh, and then you can jump in game and look at them all at once to see which one fits. Lastly, we're gonna want a sound here of splashing water. So create a speaker, go to the uh, sound picker window, and uh, most of the water effects, especially the ones that you want to play continuously, are under ambient environmental. Don't forget to add looping one to the speaker to make sure it plays over and over again. Now, I have to be honest, I could not find a single particle that I thought worked well for the splash effect. Um, some of the particles that were close only fired once, they didn't cycle, and there's no way to change that from the map. You have to actually edit the particle itself. So I went in and edited a particle that worked, uh, and I'm going to uh, put a link to it down in the doobly-doo below so that you can add it to your map if you wish. But it does go to show that using particles is not necessarily uh, beginner friendly. So uh, keep that in mind when you decide to add particle effects. Well, that's it for today's lesson. I hope that um, some of these advanced brush techniques give you some inspiration. Remember that you can create quite successful missions without using any of these techniques. So use them if they inspire you, ignore them if they don't. And uh, I think in the next lesson we will tackle one of the big remaining topics, and that is AI. Until then, happy mapping.